Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for Free Tip Friday on this January 22nd of 2021. I see that people are jumping on and saying, uh, I can see some viewers, so let me just see if I've got some comments going on to make sure that all of you all can see and hear me. So let me know if... Uh, if we're up and running and I can, um, and you can hear me there and then we will get started. Yes, I see that I can, I can see some of you. So yes, go ahead and give me a comment. Give me some thumbs up, gives us, give us some love so I can make sure that I can see everybody. It's great to have everybody here and I will be seen in just a moment here as I get rid of this screen. And here I am. Alrighty. Well, hello, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, as I said, live from beadshop.com. Um, it's great to be here on this free tip Friday. We've got a really special one. Janice is going to be joining me in just a moment, but I wanted to put up a couple. We have a couple of pieces of news here for you. One is we've got a couple, some of you are watching from the great bead extravaganza. We're also um, uh, streaming into the great bead extravaganza Facebook page today, as well as our bead shop group and on our YouTube channel. But the great bead extravaganza, of which beadshop.com is very happy to be a part of, we have a couple of events coming up this Saturday, which is tomorrow the 23rd i have a really special broadcast it's one that we put together just for the bead extravaganza some of you have watched me do it before it's the chinese button knot that i do over the pie disc that is coming up tomorrow at uh three uh three <laughs> all of a sudden i'm like i don't know what time it is it's tomorrow at 3 30 um from 3 30 to 4 30 p.m um, and that's going on tomorrow in the um, bead extravaganza group. I'm just going to double check my um, time on that. I had it written down on a note sitting right next to me. But of course, in the rush to get everything going for this broadcast, that note has disappeared as I look down um and you guys probably uh let's see here if you just give me one second i have it at 3 p.m i knew i was wrong i knew it so tomorrow at three from three to four p.m on the great beat extravaganza page on 123 so that's going to be the chinese but not which is going to be a lot of fun a lot of you have seen me do this but it's always good to have a refresher and then my final announcement for the great beat extravaganza um we are going to go live we have a great weekend as you know some of you who do go to tucson every year this year tucson has been postponed um they're looking at maybe april for the dates but usually the great tucson gem show the worldwide show where people descend on tucson arizona um, from all over the world that happens the first weekend in february it begins usually or late January and then runs for about two to three weeks, depending on the venue. Well, some of us at the Great Beat Extravaganza, we said, you know what, we're missing Tucson so much this year that we're going to do our own little kind of mini event. So that's going to start on February 5th and go through that Friday, February 5th, and then go Saturday the 6th and Sunday the 7th. It's going to start out with a project preview on Friday um with all of the designers kind of chatting it's going to be fun we're going to record our zoom with that but even before that um brenda schwader who uh you guys know brenda as the as a great wire wrangler she's going to start us with a desert walk uh because she lives in tucson so that'll be really cool it'll be a beautiful desert walk at 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern and then that 
uh, project preview will happen um, starting at 5 Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern. And then all day Saturday and all day Sunday, um, we're just going to go designer after designer. And it's going to be really fun. I'm going on at 3.30 p.m. That's where I got my 3.30 from. From 3.30 to 4.30 um, Pacific time uh, will be my segment on Saturday the 6th. So now that I've got that out of the way, let me take this one down and just remind you guys that you can follow us on all of our social um, uh, Instagram at beadshop.com. Of course, the Bead Table group on Facebook. And we also have a fantastic blog called The Bead Table as well that you can access right through our homepage at beadshop.com. Or you can just Google The Bead Table Bead Shop and the blog should pop right up. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you hit that subscribe button. We really, really appreciate it. That helps everyone else in the bead world find us and watch our videos. And we really, really appreciate your support with that. So let me go over here and say, uh, look at our comments and grab, uh, grab Janice and bring her on. I just want to make sure, look, there's so many people watching. It's great to have all of you guys here. And I'm excited that you're excited um, about our upcoming mix. So, JP, I'm unmuting you. Are you ready? In the in the background, I'm going to add you over. And here, whoops, let me move. There we go. That's a little bit better. How are you doing, JP? Hi. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited to watch you tomorrow. I have a weekend at home. I'm beating all weekend and I'm going to put you on. And that's three o'clock Pacific time, right? Pacific time. That's right. Yeah. Okay. From three to okay. four Pacific. And so it'll be your time, uh, three, four, five, five o'clock, right? Three, no, six o'clock. Three hours. Yeah. Yes. Six o'clock yes. uh, uh, Eastern. Um, so it's right. going to be, it's going to be really fun. I think, um, just going to pop on for a little button knot segment. One just of, a little one pop of the on. Things, a little pop on. Um, the button knot is really a fun, a, a fun knot to do. It's one of the things that was kind of a bead shop staple. And one of the first knots I learned how to tie from you way back in 1992. Not from me. Well, from me. Not actually. from me. Yeah. No, yeah, Mia. not for me. No, I look but, at the knots and I just see, you know, uh, <laughs> filing my taxes. I just, <laughs> right. I, I, well. I love watching you and it, and it, it really, it's wonderful for nap taking. I just, you know, when you're doing a knot, if I don't have to work, I like to just close my eyes and listen to you <laughs> Over tell me how to under. do a knot. <laughs> right. And, like that, I'm out. All of a yeah. sudden, boom, yes. No, yeah. we do have a couple, you know, I get emails from people time to time who watch our broadcasts all over the world, which is which is great. We love that so much. And they say that, you know, because our time zones are so different that I come mm -hmm. on for them in the middle of the night. So they watch and then they just fall asleep. So good night to all of our friends on the other side of the world. Um, but it's great to have all of you here. Well, we missed all of you on Wednesday. You know, Wednesday, we didn't broadcast because it was the inauguration here in the US. And I know we have an international cast of characters who watch us. But we were uh, watching the inauguration, um, as I have done uh, since I was a little girl. Um, it wasn't the first inauguration of my lifetime, but the first one I can remember watching was, of course, Richard Nixon uh, way back in the early 70s. That was the first inauguration I remember. And my grandparents always... Uh, uh, always watch the inauguration stuff. So I've watched, I think, almost every single one since my first one. And yesterday or Wednesday was no exception. Um, so uh, but it will it ties in a little bit to what we're doing today, Janice, which is mm -hmm. our um, kind of a tribute to both of our grands, really, this Rose and Bess collection. So I think it was New Year's Eve. It does, yeah. Right? It was New Year's Eve. You and I were chatting a little bit because um, we left. I left work early. Um, and we were kind of starting to do a little bit of planning for January. And we started looking at beads. 
And as yes. we brought up the beads, and Janice and I, when we do this, we text back and forth with each other, right? And we text photos back and forth and stuff like that. Um, and so um, we found some beads that we loved. And this mix started to come together, right? Um, it did. Yeah. It did. And so you started telling me about your grandmother. So tell me a little bit about your grandmother, yes. <laughs> JP. Because it's, it's named she after was... Rose, my grandmother, and Bess, your yes. grandmother. Yes. Yes. My grandmother came from uh, Russia. She came from the, uh, the from Ukraine. Um, she uh, she was a mail order bride. Mm -hmm. So my grandfather uh, he, uh, he went AWOL from the Russian army and got on a ship and came to America, and then I guess ordered my grandmother or went back, sent money back to the village or something or and because there weren't enough women in America. Um, and so she, he got her a ticket. They hadn't met. And then they spent maybe the next 60 years fighting. Um, <laughs> passionately. Wow, they were married a yard. Right. They were married a long time. They had, they gave, uh, they brought into the world five beautiful daughters who were very wow. talented in music and arts in education. But they, these were not the grandparents uh, that you wanted to see in the commercial of, oh dear, let's go live in the retirement community. Uh, do you remember, Katie, the way you ch say your grandmother used to collect S and H green stamps, and then yeah, we um, talked about that. We talked about the green stamps. You bet. And we drive up to San Jose to the green stamp store to uh, to redeem them. And didn't your grand get dressed or something and oh, we uh, to go into the store? Oh, yeah. yeah. We got dressed or, yeah. you know, we dressed up. And, you know, then driving, even just, you know, in California, we didn't have the big interstates, right? So it took a yeah. while to get from Gilroy up to San Jose, even though it wasn't that geographically far apart. Mm -hmm. So my grandmother would collect, you know, candy dishes, the cut glass candy dishes. And I remember as a small child, kind of hiding behind the door as my grandmother would throw the, the, the candy dishes at my grandfather. And he sat there listening to his classical music, eating his grapefruit, uh, and he didn't pay any attention. But <laughs> well. they stayed together, they stayed together. I think deep down inside they loved each other, but yeah, she was sure. just very hot headed and he yeah, was sure. very calm and, mm -hmm. and um, he just didn't let anything rattle him, yeah. but they had so they five balanced. daughters. And, yeah, wow. they did. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, she was quite a character. She was a bird wow. lover. So uh, Bess was Lydia's, was your mother Lydia's mother? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, Gran was also very, uh, she was, she could be feisty, but uh, she was always kind of the peacekeeper in our whole household, that's for mm. sure. So Rose was my, my grandmother and my mom, Gwen, her mother. So um, we have very mm -hmm. fond, fond memories. Um, and it was really fun talking about the S&H green stamps and then the blue chip stamps too, yes. right? <laughs> right. You got one or the other and we just wet them. I remember with a little sponge and paste them in the book and we got cut glass things as well. I think everybody's yeah. candy dish came from the, the green stamp store. But yeah. um, let me, let's take a look at the mix because we do okay. still, um, we, we pop them in to, um, the website this morning, uh, Drea did. And if they're all not, if they're almost sold out if they're not sold out already, but there's gonna be, but if they are and you're watching this live and it's 10.45 a.m. on the West Coast, um, let me get this here. Bear I can let, I'm gonna tell you if, the, if the, what we have. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna check. This. 
Uh, we have five right now and five right now. And so mm -hmm. we will have more. They go in at noon um, Pacific time. Again, we put our second round so that people can grab them. Um, and they're such a beautiful um, mix. Um, so jump in. You can you can take a look. It's right on the front page of our homepage at Bead Shop. Um, and then you'll be able to add them back to your cart at noon if we um, if we sell out. So there was a couple of linchpins from this this um, uh, mix that I wanted to show. And this one is I'm going to actually maybe move them. I'll show them on here and then maybe I'll take them off of the gray and put them on this. white. All right. I've got some white actually right here. It's raining here in Northern California today. So oh, the, the light that's is wonderful. Yeah, it is. Thank goodness. Right. So there we go. You can see that this is kind of a pink. It's kind of a dusty rose. I don't know if um, you guys remember, you know, back in the 80s, not only, uh, you know, pink was a big a kind of an 80s color that I wore a lot actually in high school. But I don't know if you guys will remember, my mom is going to know what story I'm telling already right off the cuff. The 80s was kind of the start of like the big epic miniseries, right? Miniseries is this is kind of started in the late 70s and early 80s. So if you remember um, the Thorn Birds as a miniseries, we oh, just right. got a we we just got an oi from Krista back in the back in yeah. the fulfillment room, <laughs> and the um the color of Maggie's dress when she comes down to make her debut is ashes of roses, and so that's kind of what I call this color. It kind of has a rose kind of a color to it. So if you'll remember uh, that color as she walk down the stairs also the color of one of my prom dresses um but it's such a it, it, this was kind of the linchpin this was kind of the starter of this of this um mix and so this one let me measure it for you guys so you can see these are all check glass um which are just i think just gorge gorgeous and these are about 14 millimeters by um 10 millimeters here Right. And so that's kind of the biggest bead. This one is also kind of big. It's the barrel. We love this faceted oval barrel uh -huh. and it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to push it up. This bead we kind of chose, um, I think, because both of our grandmothers were a little feisty and, you know, kind of old fashioned. And I think this bead is kind of feisty and old fashioned. I don't know what else to say about it. It's almost 12 millimeters. It has that etched surface on it. So it really does look super vintage. I just love it. I just love it. And my mom's also reminding me that the appliances in our kitchen were also pink. And that is true. That 60s pink. That is right. We also threw in Janice when I texted this button over to you, a picture mm -hmm. of it. You were like, yep, that's the button. And it's our star button, our star flower button that we carry, but in a new color way. Yeah. Um, and it's almost just shy of 18 millimeters. And you can see the back is silver foiled. So it's really great. Um, and then we have uh, the faceted drops, but they're smaller than the faceted drops that we normally carry. This size from door to door, we like to say this is about about 14 and a half millimeters. And again, they're also they're kind of a mauve kind of or milk glass pink, which I love. And the top and the bottom are bronze. Um, this one's a cut glass. And Janice, when you and your mom, when you had bead shop as a as a standalone store, you and your mom mm -hmm. sold a lot of vintage glass, right? Yeah. Yes. We used to uh, fly into New York and uh, we would go to 37th Street and we would bring like a shopping cart or suitcases or whatever. And we would just buy out of these old houses yeah. that they had things that were on the cards or they... Uh, were just in boxes and the strings were broken and you would 
just load up baskets and yeah then they'd weigh it there was no other real way of doing it but to weigh it by the kilo right. and then we would yeah. take it back to the hotel that we would stay at on broadway and we would put everything out on the bed and look <laughs> at what we had bought it was a lot of that's fun so great fun. that's so great well these have that very vintage kind of vibe to them. They're a little over nine millimeters from door to door. Um, that would remind me of a bead that you and Lydia would have found in the bowels of some of some New York uh, bead dealer. Well, you know, Kate, these beads are made the same way they were made 40, 50, 75 years ago. They're no, still exactly. made in small family, we call it a factory with quote marks around it. Mm -hmm. But uh, a bead that we have in this collection could easily be gone in three weeks and right. we'd never get it back again as it could be around for the next five years. We just don't right. know. You it's don't uh, know. very up at, yeah, yeah. And especially with this color, this kind of pink color, you know, this when the, the vintage glass beads that are kind of this pink and red color, the glass that was made uh, then, the glass itself was what was known as Rubino Oro or Ruby Gold. And Ruby Gold, the red glass was actually made with gold to strike that, that red color. So red and pink beads like this are very dear and you don't when you really look at some of the old vintage um rubino oro beads you can really tell how much they shine and, and glimmer so these mm -hmm. really these two especially especially this one really have that kind of rubino oro kind of feel to it um the 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 mix comes with a bunch of small beads to these pinch beads these rondelles these little tiny, they're like a about the size of a six aught, maybe a five aught. And can you see how the windows have been cut in the beads? Um, they're really spectacular, also very, very vintage. And then of course, JP, your favorite and mine, just a simple druck or a round mm -hmm. um, yeah. in, the, in the four millimeter, very pretty. And then we threw in, of course, some Czech crystal. This is Preciosa um the six millimeter in uh the light rose so that's those are the tasty beads that you're going to be getting in this mix which i think are so gorgeous and then i thought i'd put let me do this big reveal i put oh and you know i forgot to even mention of course you get a mini tube of the 8-4245 in it's an a dot um and you can see what a nice color that is uh we have a viewer asking how is the glass different from cranberry glass um and it's very similar i think the red cranberry glass was also used especially the vintage was also used um gold was used in there to um to uh create that red um that beautiful red that's why when you see like old red glass or vintage glass um that's truly red all through and through not just painted on the surface that it's expensive right um because it's so rare it was harder to make um but i thought i'd throw in some of these projects one of yours janice is right front and center right here this is your oh. zen zen, zen of fishing, fishing. Yeah, and we use the the um, uh, the Ceylon. I think you use the regular Ceylon yeah. for this. Yeah. And you did some knotting. It doesn't have a clasp on the back here. Um, it just slips over your head. This would be a great one um, for this project for this mix of beads. Mm -hmm. It would have a totally different air to it. You could even use the same. Um, green girl pendant in the center mm -hmm. or we have some others that would look cool that bob briquette round pendant yes i was just thinking of that or the fan yeah, yeah or the would fan also. yeah would mm -hmm. look beautiful 
Um, and the, the drops that we put in this mix has, uh, they would look really great on the bottom of a tassel. And so that's why I mm -hmm. pulled some other tassels as well. Let me put this one aside. We did some tassels a while back that have chain with them and then they terminate in a tassel here. Um, and we have a couple of different ones that I did. This is with the lentil chain um, and with the circle back chain. These little caps, I think this is the capped off bead cap that we carry, uh -huh. but we carry uh -huh. some other cones as well. Um, this would be great to start with a tassel. Um, you guys know I'm partial to tassels, um, but that would be a, a, a great one. Um, and then let me pull around. This was one, you did one of these as well, Janice. Yours, I think, had the red glass in it. But this also has kind of a cascading tassel with some wire worked elements in it. These beads from the mix, I think, would just look really beautiful in Perfect. the wire wrapped elements. This is the um, smooth sailing chain, I think is the one uh -huh. that you used. And I want to note this one, or the one that I did, but you, you might have used a similar chain. I want to focus in on this drop, or on this segment of the drop for you guys real quick. Um, so you can kind of see how this one was put together. I thought it was kind of clever, if I do say so myself, um, is that here you can see we use that swirl button for the center in that center. So using a button as a centerpiece is also kind of a fun way to go. And then it just wire wraps, the wire wrap comes through up through the check glass and then it goes into the chain. And notice how I've wire wrapped on both sides of the chain. So some drops are coming out to the left here and some are coming out to the right. So not everything has to hang pointing down, especially with something like this, having it be a little, I don't know, the word jumbled isn't the word I want, but but have it be, you know, having it lay kind of in different directions, I think just adds a little kind of visual interest to the piece. There's my Kate, your, um, yep. your project uh, that you're talking about is called Springs Eternal. And it's oh, part of this one. Beads of Wisdom. That's oh, great. the collection. Beads of Wisdom. Yeah. Perfect. And then we did this one, Janice. This was from our Softflex 101, I think, mm -hmm. project. Um, and we did one that was just a simple long lariat or a long um, uh, just strand that you can wrap around several times. Or you can use it. I'm going to pull the camera back a little bit here so you can see this one. We also did one that was a multi-strand. And I want to show you this multi-strand. And Janice, I think this is one that you did where you had three strands that came up with the bugles. And mm -hmm. all of these strands yeah. came up through some check glass here. So you took it from three strands to one. And that if I pull this aside, if you could peek right down in the inside of this roller bead, it has such a big hole. What you did to take from these three strands to one is you just crimp them all together flat mm -hmm. in a crimp tube and then covered that crimp tube with one of our roller beads and then cut two of the strands away and then had that single strand terminate up into the clasp. So it's a great way if you don't want to, if you don't want to use or you don't have um, a, a multiple strand kind of a connector here, you can just take mm -hmm. it from three strands, crimp flat, not in a crimping plier, but flat so that all of the metal contacts, mm -hmm. all of the soft flex, and then cut away your, your excess and then strings up to the top. JP, do you happen to remember the name of this necklace or maybe Gita will yes. find it? Yes, no, I, mm -hmm. I, it's called uh, Lake Frog and it's oh, okay. part of Softflex 101. Softflex 101, yep, Lake Frog. Mm -hmm. It's really, yeah. it's such a great piece. And this Thank would you. also be um, a really nice one for some of these special, um, uh, check glass, this special check glass mix. Yeah, and, would be great. And these barrels have a little bit of a yellow 
to them too, a little bit of a mm -hmm. mustard um, along with a little bit of red. So I think it's kind of an interesting, um, I just love how they look with these. So I hope you guys like them too with this. And then I wanted to show you, let me move this over and move this over. Um, I done some chain lariats and I bring this one out from time to time because it really is a favorite um, that we did. And it's just a mix of a bunch of our different chains, including fancy pants over here, which I love. And then our Rustico. This has some jump rings, our textured jump rings in it. Um, and again, that smooth sailing clasp, I think that one, or the smooth sailing chain. But this would also really be a great way to put in, especially some of these featured, these big, these bigger um, check glass beads. This would be a great project for that. You could also slip them in with this fancy pants chain. So it doesn't have to be so chain heavy. You could mix a lot of the check glass into this one as well. This one is called Roaring Twenties, Kate, Roaring and it's 20s. from the mm -hmm. uh, Lariat Collection. Collection, that's great. Yeah. And you can find, especially those of you who are rather new to watching us here at Bead Shop, you can find all of these projects. If you go to our website, beadshop.com, and you go under projects, you'll see the projects kind of laid out in necklaces, earrings, or bracelets, and then there's some other um, um, categories as well. If you click on those, you'll be able to kind of explore. We have so many projects for you guys to play around with. Um, this one, and it's all connected. It connects all to all of our um, the the supplies and the materials that you need, the ingredients that you need for it. Now, this is one I trot out from time to time. This is from my personal collection, a piece that I've made. Um, again, you know how much I love tassels. You can see this. This is a big. This is a giant tassel that usually I have hanging around my house. I don't think that my ruler is going to be long enough to, to show you, but the legs on this tassel are about six inches in length. Um, and this is just a mishmash of a bunch of check glass that I had. This actually came from a bead swap probably 20 years ago here. Um, but this would be a great one if you do want to make just like a tassel to hang around your house, right? If you just this piece just kind of brings me joy every time I look at it. So you could use the drops to unify the bottom and then you could kind of take the other pieces, you know, the other kind of main beads and then mix them up with your seed beads and stuff and maybe even things from your own stash and pull it all together. You can see in this tassel, it's a great way to use up a lot of your random pieces. And I think the theme of this swap might have been flowers. Um, and I didn't use flower beads a lot in my work, but I thought that they would unify together really nicely in this tassel. So it's a good challenge um, if you're like, well, you know what? I don't really do pink. Well, that's OK. Um, you can kind of play around with it, add some different colors and create something that maybe isn't a necklace or something to wear, but something that will delight you when you see it in your in your bead room. It's gorgeous, Kate. It's just Thanks. I thought it was kind uh, of I, I want to hang it in a window. Yeah. I want to put it up in a up. window or a, on a wall or Yeah. It's really it's luscious. It's just gorgeous. And I strung it. You can see the bottoms are just like this with some little seed beads that go around and then back up through. It's on Ceylon, a nylon thread. But you could also use these drops at the bottom and just tie a knot right underneath to terminate the um, the dangle like that. Um, the last thing I want to share, we got a couple of comments about our necklaces, JP, and I wanted to show this oh. before before we sign off um, because I thought it was a great way. This is stuff out of my own collection, um, but it, it is with the Rustico chain. But I wanted to show you and also our large um, oval jump ring here. Let me get that towards the center so you guys can see it. And this something even just simple like this, you could wire wrap some beads on this Rustico chain. It would look really nice, right? Um, you can see I've got the swivel clasp here on the end. So I just have the chain coming down. I have two of 
the oval jump rings. It's those textured oval jump rings that we carry. I wire wrapped a pearl, connected another textured oval jump ring here, and then connected it to this swivel. Now, if you have a lot of different pendants like I do, this is one that our buddy um, Cynthia Thornton, she painted this piece of leather for me and I had this old, it's kind of hard to see, it has a little bit of a, let me see if I can get rid of that shot of that reflection there. This was an old locket that I had and so she painted that piece of leather with my initial in it. So if you have like a, you know, a pendant or even if you wire wrap maybe a whole bunch of these beads and have like a tassel that you might want to take on, put on or take off. What I do is I attach some jump rings to the top and I wanted to have a little bit of movement here. So I attached a couple of jump rings here so it would be facing the correct way. And then all I do is when I put this piece on, I open up our swivel, and this is, I think, our mm -hmm. large swivel that I use. And then mm -hmm. I'll slide on the tassel or whatever it is that I want to wear. And then I'll come in on the other side, and I'll put the, the jump ring in there. So you can see the closure. So see how I've got the textured jump rings. I've got a wire wrap, another textured oval, our large swivel, and then I just repeat it over here, the textured oval, one of our mini hoops, and then another textured oval jump ring connects it to this Rustico chain. So it's a great way, and you could, you know, do anything, you know, anything like this. I could have put this tassel on, on a jump ring and use that instead. So it's a great way to kind of make a base chain or a base piece that you really like, and then add a variety of different things on there so you can kind of wear them, um, kind of convert them to different, um, to different designs as the mood strikes you. I'm gonna put that. Kate, on. I also just wanted to say, mm -hmm. I like the way you use the mixed metals that you just, you know, get a jump ring in copper and then go to right. something, then wire in silver, then, you know, it's like, it makes it so much more interesting. Um, I mean, you. you can go overboard with mixing metals, but right. um, you don't want it to end up being too busy um, right. and take away from it, but you've done just enough of it oh, to add you. to all that really nice silver chain that that makes you want to look at what's going on right there. It's not just a once over and not look at it. Your eye really stops at those, you know, gold jump rings and that oh, copper clasp. You. So it's really, it's really nice. Thank you. You know, I always say, we, oh, thanks. We have such a variety of great little jump rings and little components and stuff. And, you know, having those in your stash when the mood strikes you, you know, and sometimes you guys, when we do a project with Janice and Janice says, oh, I don't have any beads at home. You know, it's kind of sometimes it stilts your imagination or your creative process. So, you know, it's a great, you know, when you order or whatever, you can add a few little things that are stash builders. Um, and I think that kind of frees your creativity so often. That's how I do it. I've got all my little jump rings and little random stuff there. So they're right ready at hand to add into my stuff. Well, okay. I have things that I can, I have a lot of beads here, but <laughs> you do. There are times, Kate, when I'm making a project for Bead Shop and I need to use only what we have in stock. I can't right. use that bead I really love from four years ago that right. it's no longer being made. So that's right. what gets frustrating. Yeah. So. But it's, so I it's feel really... what everyone else feels at home when they can't, <laughs> feels that pain. When they can't yeah. fill a project. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to um, put us all back on the screen so we can say goodbye to everyone. There we are. There oh, we, I hate we saying are on the side. I know. I do, too. It's no fun. But um, hopefully we've given you guys a great dose of creativity um today with this great uh rose and bess mix that we've got here and we really are excited to see where your creativity will take you with this um you know and when you get these beads you guys cut them up 
take them off the strand, start stirring them up immediately, start throwing in some of the pieces that you might have at home and, um, you know, create. That's, that's what we want to see from you is some creative energy. And we hope that this uh, mix that Janice and I put together will mm. kind of kickstart some of that. Um, yes, as Gita says, free those beads. That's exactly right. Free those beads. Well, let me take this out. So it's just you and me here. There we are. Okay. Um, so we've got some fun stuff coming up next week. As I say, we've got the the broadcast on Saturday in the great bead extravaganza. I'll see you guys uh, at three from three to four tomorrow on the 22nd. We'll also be. How do we watch it. that? How do yeah, we we're going to be simulcasting it not only in the Great Beat Extravaganza group on Facebook, but you'll also see it right on our YouTube channel, as well as in the group, our Facebook group right here on Facebook. So you'll have three places to watch it. Um, if you're uh, not uh, on into Facebook, you can go right to our YouTube channel. Um, we always simulcast and stream right in right into our YouTube channel there. Um, and then next week we have a mystery box opening unboxing um that's really exciting um stay tuned for your new newsletters to your newsletters that's going to be fun about that's that. be it is fun. we're going to have a special guest on and uh you and i are going to be going through the pieces and making some um things right off the cuff which is going to be super exciting um and then the following weekend that friday saturday and sunday we're going to be great beat extravaganzing the tucson edition so we'll be partnering up with a bunch of our buddies so again there'll be more um info about that but let me put this uh, right up just to remind you guys about that since we've got this great graphic um, and so mark your calendars there and if you haven't joined us on the bait, great bead extravaganza uh, Facebook group you can do that as well um, so you won't miss anything from all of our friends well <clears throat> pardon me well Janice I think that does it for our it Friday does. broadcast yeah. But thank you so much for hanging out. I hope that everybody enjoyed these stories and enjoyed um, kind of uh, hearing a little bit. I always love to hear your stories about your grand, and I know that uh, it's reciprocated because I talk about my grand yeah. as well. So it was really fun. Yeah. It was fun. Does everyone know about your grand putting uh, her gloves in the glove box of the car? In always the having gloves glove there. Box. Yeah. Yeah. That's always what it was there called were gloves. The glove box. That's right. And we always had, you know, uh, my mom will laugh and remember this because Gran always had a scarf in the glove box in case we had to run into church to light a candle for someone. Yeah. She yeah. always had it like a good Italian, a good Sicilian uh, yeah. would do. And just in case, Katie, we have to run into the church. I got to light a candle. So uh, so we never knew when when she needed it but thanks everyone is saying that they had a great time and of course janice they always loved seeing you uh Aww. cindy said and thank I'll you everyone the thing. she said great seeing you janice and kate always great ideas well we um always uh really uh appreciate you guys watching and supporting and uh, helping our little woman owned small business survive yeah. in these trying times. But you can Thank always you. find Thank us um, on our uh, social uh, on Instagram at beadshop.com. Of course, our bead shop group at the bead table, as well as our bead table blog. And you can follow and subscribe at beadshop.com right on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. And please, you guys, sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. You know, Drea takes care of our newsletter and writes our newsletter every day. And she is such a wordsmith and does such a great job. We are really, really fortunate that um, she takes such pride in making sure um, the newsletter is as entertaining as it can be all the time. So Janice, have a great weekend. Yes, dear. Thank you, Katie. And thank, thank you everybody you. for watching. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. All right. And what do you say? Wear what your we mask. Say? We say wear your mask. I've got mine right here. Yep. Wash our wear hands. Your mask. Wash your hands. Because you know, my mom got vaccinated already. Vaccines are coming, you guys. So stay safe. Keep social distancing. Wear those masks. 
and I will see you Saturday in the for the Great Beat Extravaganza. And next week, Janice and I will be back with a fun surprise broadcast for you. All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.